Hey everybody, I'm CJ, and I was reading through some comics the other day and kind of hit upon an idea for yesterday's video, and then of course there, there was no video for yesterday, and then that kind of led me down the rabbit hole of thinking, you know what, maybe what I need to do from now on is just make videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, because doing one every single day, like finding something to talk about every single day, uh, not really feeling that, you know? So anyway, but uh, one thing I definitely wanted to talk about today is I'm calling this the comics that made us, you know? Um, obviously, I'm a comic book fan, love comics. And one of the things that I've noticed about everybody's story when it comes to comics, you know, how did you, and I don't mean movies, like, oh yeah, I love comics. I've seen all the movies. No, I mean actual fucking comics, all right? One of the things I've noticed is that just about everybody who's a comic book fan, number one, there's usually some kind of a story as to how they came about becoming a comic book fan, which I guess that's the first thing. And the second thing is, in the great majority of cases, I'm not going to say every single one of them, but in the great majority of cases it wasn't the big splashy anniversary issue that was somebody's first comic book. Nine times out of ten, somebody's first comic book was, you could call them a filler issue or an incidental issue or whatever you want, but the point is, somebody's first comic book, just statistically speaking, it's probably not the death of Jean Grey or it's probably not the death of Jason Todd. Uh, so on and so forth. You know, it's usually not the big, flashy, and important storylines. It's, generally speaking, somebody got into comic books on what was otherwise a mundane issue. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's really all that good either, but it's it's not bad. This is just, by historical standards, this is not an, this is not an important issue. Does that make sense? And so, that that kind of comic book, a, a comic book that was, it was basically put out because, hey, we have to put a comic book out every month, so here it is. That seems to be most people's first comic book. Or that, or maybe that's not the best way to put it. The the comic book that basically set the foundation for somebody to become a comic book fan, generally speaking, is one of what, what I call... It's it's the more incidental type stuff, you know, just it, this is another issue of The Flash or this is just another issue of The Punisher or whatever. And in relation to that, I started thinking about, well, what what were the comic books that made me a fan? You know, again, not the first ones that I ever got, because when I was a really little kid, I remember just comic books always being around. But what made me a comic book fan? You know, what was it that that went that that made me go from somebody who, eh, I there are, are comic books around, and I, I I do have them, but I don't necessarily follow every single issue. How did that change? You know, how did I go from not following every single issue to following every single issue? And what I realized was it really came down to three comics. All right, there are three comic books that really, that really did it for me. And so if you're not already, please look at the screen. The comic books that, that really made me into a comic book fan, at, I, at this point I assume it's for life because it's been this way for all these decades now. These, these are the three comic books that I can point back to and say, yep, these are the ones that did it. And... There's a whole story about it, uh, you know, how exactly it was that I came about getting these three issues, and maybe it's interesting to me. I doubt it's going to be interesting to too many other people, but going from the top here, you've got uh, Detective Comics number 618 on the far left, and again, this is, I don't want to go so far as to say this is an incidental issue, because it's, in a way it is, but in a way it's also not. Uh, Tim Drake that's him on the cover in the red jacket or whatever that's supposed to be. He's in the process of uh, of learning and training 
and he's kind of going on a journey to becoming Robin, the new Robin. And this is, this storyline, I, I believe it's called a rite of passage. This is a pretty crucial and pivotal step in his journey towards becoming Robin. But at the same time, this is a storyline that history, I don't want to say history's forgotten about. Actually, if anything, history seems to have forgotten about Tim Drake. But for whatever reason, for as important as this storyline is, you know, the death of uh, Tim Drake's mom and everything, um, this just isn't widely considered to be a classic. You know, most people don't read, wouldn't, most people just don't put that kind of importance on this storyline in general and on this issue and, you know, in particular. But this was the first Batman comic book that I can remember buying. It was the first time I saw uh, Norm Brayfogle's art. And it was my first exposure to Tim Drake as a character and his history and what he's all about. And it it really made me want to get more into the story, follow all this, find all the back issues, and and basically just get up to speed on what exactly this world is, you know, who these characters are, what this story is all about. And for me, when it comes to my fandom of Batman, especially in comics, it all goes back to this issue right here, Detective Comics number 618. Next, in the middle, it's uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 336, I believe written by uh, David Michelini and drawn by Eric Larson. And again, this is not one of those stories that people look back on and say, man, that was just a real classic. This was kind of an incidental story. It, and again, that's what that, that was sort of like the buy-in for me. And obviously I was coming in part of the way through the story here, but... Uh, basically, you've got uh, Spider-Man, and he's going up against uh, the the Sinister Six. <clears throat> and just on the just on the cover, we've got the Vulture and another character called Chance. And I always thought Chance was kind of a lame villain. I thought so at the time, and nothing's really changed my mind since then. It's just Chance is just kind of an incoherent and incomprehensible character. He's never made sense to me. And I think that's probably one of the many reasons he hasn't really stuck around all that much. But nevertheless, I mean, you see Spider-Man, he's swinging around doing Spider-Man stuff. He's got all of these uh, villains that he's going up against. And this just looks like a really fun and exciting story. And for me, that was the buy-in. I, I, I was curious about Spider-Man. I wanted to... Uh, he was one of those... I, I was First of all, I was just never a real big Marvel guy, but... Spider-Man was one of those characters that it always seemed like it was a near miss for me. And so I kind of saw this storyline as a chance to get in on the ground floor, so to speak, of what it is that makes Spider-Man interesting. Because I always kind of had a fascination for the character, but didn't really know a whole lot about him. And so this, this issue right here was the beginning of me changing that. A little bit. And like I say, this is not a, a an historically important storyline. And this isn't this isn't one of those things that people point back to to this very day and say, man, that story was awesome. It was just there. And it was good and it was fun. And for me, that was enough. Next up there's Adventures of Superman number 469. And this is, unlike the other two, this is not part of some gigantic wider story that's going on. Uh, and there's not a lot of, uh, you know, for each of the other two, uh, Detective Comics and Amazing Spider-Man, there's some character stuff, some kind of important character stuff that was going on in those, <clears throat> in those issues. And that's not really the case with Adventures of Superman number 469. This is just a, a big, fun action fest. And that's really all this is. It's, it's uh, Superman, he's, uh, he's duking it out in Smallville with these uh, kind of B-level or maybe even C-level uh, supervillains. They're not even supervillains. They're just kind of thugs. And it's, it's a fun little issue. It's a one-and-done story, unlike the other two. And you get the beginning and a middle and an end. 
and it's it's just a fun story. That's it. And it goes a long way towards explaining who Superman is, what he's all about, what he can do, and the kind of adventures that he has. And it, it's just, it, it, it's a good issue to kind of give you a sort of a flavor, or rather, it gives you the flavor of Superman, just as this issue of Amazing Spider-Man. It gives you the basic flavor of Spider-Man, this issue of Detective Comics. It gives you the basic flavor, less so, I would say, but still gives you the be- the uh, basic flavor of Batman. And I picked all three of these issues up uh, at the same time. And these are really sort of like the cornerstone of my comic book fandom. This is what it all goes back to for me. You know, this is where everything begins. And the reason I'm kind of harping on all of this is to say that you don't really get this anymore, you know? Everything in in uh, uh, the industry, which is to say DC and Marvel, it's all about putting out some kind of an anniversary issue or a big event issue that captivates existing readers' interest. And, or at least that's how things were these days. I mean, it's just, I don't think anyone even really cares anymore. And, like, the thing is, that's not going to be what attracts new readers. What attracts new readers is, I mean, if if past is prologue, what attracts new readers is just putting out a Batman story every single month, putting out a Spider-Man story, putting out a Superman story every single month. And eventually with Superman, I think it would actually be every single week. But anyway, but the, the point is you don't get this with comics anymore. It's like the industry, I mentioned it a, a few videos ago, or a few days ago, that the industry at some point kind of turned its back on new readers. They wanted to cater to the existing readership that they had, which is great when it's 1991, but when it's not 1991 anymore, and it hasn't been 1991 for a long time, you kind of need to replenish your readers. And Stories, uh, issues like these would 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 give new readers a chance to get in on a character and figure out, well, who is this person? You know, wh- who are they? Wh- you know, what do they do? What makes them so so special and so different from every other comic book that's on the stand? I mean, you don't really get that as much anymore. And one of the things that, I mean, this is just it seems to be kind of a fact of life. You know, this is something. This is one of the few things that Comics Gate really can't give to readers today because every time a new Comicscape book comes out, it's an event. You know, when Ethan Van Skyver launches a new crowdfunding campaign for the for the next Cyberfrog book, it's not going to be an incidental story. This is going to be a huge event. And yes, the story is going to, it's going to progress. The characters are going to grow. The art's going to look amazing. We all know that. But it's not it's not going to be one of these more incidental type things where new readers can get the basic flavor of something in a low risk, low cost kind of way. And that I'm not criticizing anybody for that. I'm certainly not criticizing Ethan for that. I'm just observing that what made me into a comic book fan by reading these three issues, you cannot replicate in comics gate. And you, in theory, you could replicate it with the industry today. It's just that the industry today doesn't really seem very interested. And I mean, the mainstream in, uh, industry, they don't seem all that interested in providing gateways and introductions and starting points uh, for new readers. They just don't seem interested in doing that anymore. And I don't know. I mean, there's no way to say all of this without sounding a little bit like old man yells at clouds, but. I mean, it, it, it's true. You know, every basically every possible gateway that kids used to use to get into comics doesn't exist anymore. And people have been sounding the alarm about that for a long time. It's not like I'm, I'm the first one to ever do that. But, you know, we're really starting to see the, what the consequences of that can be. And so, anyway... Um, so hopefully there's something here that you like, you know, the three issues that made me a comic book fan. These are the comics that made us, or at least these are the comics that made me. 
and it doesn't seem like these are the comics that the industry is interested in making anymore. And Comicsgate doesn't, it's just not really capable of making comics like this. So it's unfortunate. Anyway, that's that. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, comment, like, and share this video because it really helps me out. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Cole Loves Comics.